you know, it's, it's quite tricky. There's a lot of players who see this as just, oh, so you're telling me I can't use my mounts and it's less efficient. Uh, fuck that. I don't want this. Let, it be, this. let this be an optional feature. But then the problem is, like, if this is just an optional feature, then that kind of, you know, they go and design a whole bunch of really intricate things in the open world for the sake of dragon flying, and you're somebody there doing it in dragon flying. And, you know, maybe you mess it up two or three times, and instead of pushing through to get a higher level of mastery in it, you just see some motherfucker flying in, and the Netherwing Drake just goes, boop, done. Completely circumvented the new mechanic. It's not really... It would undercut the feature. And like, what we normally get is no flying in a new expansion. And I think if you talk to just about any World of Warcraft designer, they almost all regret adding flying in the Burning Crusade. Which is a funny thing, because flying is cool, and the rewards that it gives us, you know, is pretty cool. Maybe wearing a bit thin now, because, I mean, come on, hundreds of mounts, right? But, uh, you know, I look at this, and I just think that, assuming they can get this to be really fun, this could be a massive win for the game, and that'll be their challenge. Because, to be honest with you, especially this falling animation, it is not holding up to Guild Wars 2 straight up mm. and a lot of people said guild wars 2 didn't invent physics did guild wars 2 invented gravity yeah that's it um <laughs> michael dotty has stopped responding <laughs> it was going to be an isaac newton joke about him uh, being a gamer anyway yep, uh, but this actually is so fucking similar to guild wars 2 and i know a lot of the people who have being angry at people pointing out the similarity, it's as if they've not played Guild Wars 2 or haven't seen it. But like, actual mechanics like the diving and the swooping, and I think some of the resource-ish management they're going to go mm. for is very similar. And yeah. what that does mean is you're setting up a direct comparison, right? Yep. That means Blizzard has got to hit Guild Wars 2's high bar. Hey, we've just added a feature. It's a budget Guild Wars 2. And that, you, you yeah. You don't want that. So don't it's going to be really rough if they don't get that. But I think that the core fantasy of this is really cool. Well, the core great. fantasy of this makes you think of dragons. Hell yeah. This is an example of... And this is not something we tend to get in World of Warcraft, because World of Warcraft, let's be real, is a fucking static game. It's a really static when, game. When's the last time it's actually changed in a way that's been, like, meaningful? Legion? Yeah. Like, the thing with World of Warcraft is it doesn't really have any toy in it. Yeah. It doesn't have much of a toy. And when game designers talk about the toy, mm. it's just like that fundamental thing. It doesn't have to have a loop or anything, yeah. but it's just inherently fun to do. The thing that's fun to play with, yeah. Yeah, and there's a massive... Guild Wars 2 mounts, every one of them is a toy. Mm -hmm. WoW mounts are a tool that's a cool reward. They're not a toy. Yeah, they're a, they're a skin on your no clip. And, yeah. And so many of the times you see, like, a really cool cinematic for a game, mm. the cool thing in the cinematic kind of is the sort of thing that could be the toy in the game. Yeah. And there's just about no time in a WoW cinematic where the, the you know the, the thing in the cinematic actually matches the gameplay. Yeah. And this is finding an opportunity where they're trying to do something a bit more dynamic and interactive that would involve actual game skill. I don't mean because there's different types of game skill. Um, a good example, like you know, there's mechanically knowing all the things and executing them perfectly, mm -hmm. but then there's just say you playing uh, an anime fighter and you're yeah. just having an intuitive sense of how characters control yeah. and you know being able to execute all that shit. And you know, I look at it and I think that's fucking wizardry. <laughs> um, uh, my my win rate to him in Smash is not good. <laughs> it is not good. In fairness, he's very good at Smash. Can't believe you technically called Smash an anime fighter through that comparison, which is wrong. But that anyway. is not what I meant. But yep. yes. Yep. <laughs> Uh, but this is just a great example of, you know, they, uh, this, is a, this is just a great example of like, you see Alex Straza swoop about, you can actually do that. And um, Nice Talker says, explain to me why I should give up my Zelgrub Tiger from pre cata because another mount is better for regular ground travel. Well, you're not being asked to do that this yeah. time. So first up, there's there's that. Yeah, that's kind of like a fun, that's like a fundamental problem of if they started to apply this to more mounts and give more mounts different they stuff. They gave you the raptor with the yeah. raptor mechanics. Yeah. So if you don't understand, in Guild Wars 2, the raptor mount is your, uh, it's like the closest thing to a WoW ground mount. When you hit the space bar, it does a big jump that's a forward lunge. And like, it's got a turning circle. It's got weight. There's a bit of skill in actually using it. Yeah. Um, but that does mean when you get good at doing it, you're just hip hopping about the world and it feels really cool. 
So that would be tricky. I would say that there are less inherent gameplay advantages to having that on a ground mount that is mm. direct one-to-one -one similar to the ground mounts you've already got. Of course, yeah. I think where game mechanics can come in and help more is in the realm of flying. And as for the why should you give it up, I would say because we're playing a video game and it's more fun. Yeah, I mean, realistically, it should be the kind of thing of because this is like technically porting an old system onto a new system, generally because you want to, it's kind of it, but you also kind of shouldn't. Like, basically, if they were to add a mount that felt different on the ground, you should have that mechanic ported to whatever you want that you already have that would have a similar mechanic, and then you would choose that because you like it more. Yeah, it's but, like, yeah. it's not as convenient, yes, but imagine if we started making changes along the lines of what's the most convenient in games mm. all the time. Yeah. Like, it would not take us to a good place. Yep. And that's that's fundamentally yep. it. The problem with Blizzard is they let the cat out of the bag. Mm. And that has that has just really hurt things for them. Because the cat's out of the bag. It's going to feel like a downgrade. It could be... I'm sure there's players who will play with this and be like, well, that's really fun. But I'd like to be able to hit Numlock and go turn the kettle on. Yeah. And come back to my computer and be over there. And that's the really tricky thing. Yep. If we constrain World of Warcraft to 2005, 6, 7, forever... It's not even just that. It could be hard. It's And, like, this is going to come across a little bit inflammatory because it is by design, but people who go, well, I want a numlock over there, it's like you want, your, you want the game to be a 3D menu, a 3D interactive menu for your gameplay. The game is better if it's more fun. That obviously means the dragon riding has to be fun. That's it. That's the main, that's the problem they'll face here. Because you see conceptually people who go, oh, yeah, this shit's going to be fun. Okay, sweet. I, I guess you'll be fun. You'll make this fun. I'll enjoy that. I'm <laughs> tentative in that mafia camp. Wars. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That, that That's the thing where it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go play a game that's that instead. But oh, that's, that's really funny. That's fundamentally the thing of this having this like this needs to be a real, real good mechanic and a real hit for people to be there because it's like it's just fuck it. Like Nikki said, put more game in the game. Put more game in the game. Yeah. This is probably going to make it more fun. All, all, I mean, I could I could absolutely eat shit and it could be a terrible mechanic. And because there's definitely fears in that, which I'd like to talk to you a little bit a little bit, but like it's just that thing of Yep. Small penis, big exhaust. <laughs> I don't know if our mics picked that up. I don't know if it did, so that might be a bit of a non sequitur. <laughs> Basically, very loud. Very loud vehicle, I'd said. But yeah, no, it's like that. Just the game will probably be more fun. And if you don't think it is, then that's Blizzard's fault for not making it fun. But I fundamentally philosophically agree with this of Same. making getting around the world more interesting. I've, I've got two things to respond. One of them is actually oh, as Nightstalker. Yeah, yeah, they've very heard it. Okay, good. As a, Nightstalker has a great comment just saying, also world PvP might get interesting since you've got the chance to chase after players even if they've mounted and say you're a better dragon rider. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. One of the things uh, that people, you know, thinking about World of Warcraft, they're like, oh man, remember world PvP in vanilla? And flying mounts ruin them. Flying mounts completely turns it off. Completely and then Blizzard people. has the netomatic in BFA because they realize, fuck, we have flying, yep. but we also have war mode. Ah! Yeah. Uh, exactly. So that's Night Stalker, a great point. It's like it's not mm -hmm. quite mounted combat, but they could do some really neat things there. The other thing that I would say though is we do have to take people. You know, instead of just being like a massive stick in the mud about no, this is uh, this is better for game designers and as people working in the games industry and passing comment upon it, we say it's right in our gilded ivory tower. Which is how it's going to come off. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, just a sec. It, like, it could come off as being a second away from just saying, ah, those are the game design deplorables. Just maybe not yeah. all we want to do. So, to throw a bone and to maybe think about mm. how uh, this could be translated uh, or how there could be something that could maybe match their concerns. Yeah. Perhaps, what can we think about? Well, one thing could be the Flight Master's whistle. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, I get the idea. You want to go over there. Fair. How do we do that? Well, you could do a Flight Master's uh, whistle that perhaps has a shorter cooldown than we've been used to. And, uh, you know, I mean, hell, maybe you could even have a Flight Master's... 
Actually, no, that wouldn't work. Never mind. Mm. Anyway, just some sort of flight master's whistle that feels better than the ones we've had before. Yeah. Maybe you could just a little bit increase the speed mm. of those taxis. Yeah. Then maybe give people uh, an option to uh, dismount a taxi wherever they want, jump out. Mm. Uh, and maybe they get a little parachute button. Um, so like yeah. if they wanted to even kind of game that for a wee bit more efficiency, they kind of could do that from the taxi. I mean, how many of us have been in a flight point in WoW and thought, if I can only just jump off this and, uh, you know, bubble or something, and you know, you'd be right where you'd want to be. You could maybe do that. So is there ways we could think about modernizing the flight point system mm. that could maybe ease some of the mechanical concerns the players have? Yeah. Because there is one thing I'd like to bring up about Guild Wars 2 mounts. Go for it. You can fucking teleport anywhere you want in Guild Wars. Yeah. So you can't you... wow. So maybe even, maybe even, I would, is this the fucking gambit? We try to make dragon flying just flying in World of Warcraft forever or something, some shit like that. But then flight points, basically you just teleport to them. Because in Guild Wars 2, mm. somehow they have a feeling of a vast expanse of world where you have this great traversal, even though you can hit the map key, and as long as your characters went to a waypoint, you click the button and boom, you're over there. Yeah. I would be willing to increase that amount of teleportation if it meant that a system like dragon flying or riding would be more accepted by players. I'd kind of be willing to do that, honestly. Because when I, mean, I think you, about- there's, there's no loss there. There's literally, exactly. there's literally no loss because the people who don't want to travel don't have to travel because they teleport. The people who do want to travel have might, a more I'm, fun way to travel. I might have and to do it, a video on this. And if you're in the middle a group of, I don't want to do dragon riding, but I want to teleport, then you may just be one of the kind of people who are left a little bit by the wayside. Hopefully you can learn to like dragon riding or hopefully there's some other way for you to like get the Vista experience, but I don't think anyone enjoys flight paths, especially not recently because flight paths have been less less flight paths and more uh, deep sea diving paths <laughs> because anytime you travel across Kalimdor or Eastern Kingdoms, you just go down under the ground and then come back up the other side. So it's like, it's a little bit, um, it's, it's a little bit inflammatory anyway because it's just going to be a change. And with any change, someone's going to be like, I don't like this. And you may have very, very, very good reasons for uh, like not liking it. And this is the point where if people had faith in Blizzard, largely, I think this would be a case of, oh yeah, dragon riding. Fuck, that sounds cool. Yeah, I'll give it a spin. Mm. But I think because a lot of people don't, they're like, this is not going to be good. So I'm going to, in I'm going to say, don't do it. That's going to be the first instinct. I think it's like it's it's the the onus is entirely on them for them to go. Okay, here's alpha. Here's a like wide beta. Here's you know, I don't know if Gamescom's doing a physical, but if it is, that would be the case of, fuck it. Here's a here's a show floor demo of dragon riding. Thanks in the bit of work away with that yeah. that's the kind of thing where it's like that's it's the, the onus is ultimately on them but yeah. it's like it's a game they're making the game and they're trying to do something cool hopefully it works it's like if you try to do a sneaky little risk benefit analysis of things yeah you think about traditional flying so what it gets us is convenient movement across the world at the expense of gameplay in the world that's kind of yep. rough yep well the dragon riding gives you fun gameplay in the world at the expense of convenience. Yeah. But then we just port that, we just get people that convenience via these uh, flight points 2.0, yeah. where maybe it's just a flight master's whistle. Perhaps you click in the whistle and it brings up a little map and you know, woo, bird swoops in, the screen fades to black and then it, you know, boom, you know, dips out again and you get swooped into the uh, flight point you've chosen. And then maybe with a system like that, Blizzard could try to put these flight points at high up points in the game world so that then with your dragon riding, you uh, could... That would impact level design or be part of it, but yeah. So th there's a lot of opportunity there. I might work that into a video because I really yeah. want dragon riding to... I want it to be successful, but I also want people who are unhappy about it to kind of, you know, be able to see the benefits of this, but like not not feel punished by it. Yeah, well, um, I mean, that that's exactly... Yeah. yeah, the whole thing is... It needs to be so fun it outweighs the convenience. Yeah. And they will have to make that up in other ways. Because this isn't going to get rid of summoning stones. This isn't going to get rid of warlocks. You're not going to have to suddenly fly everywhere. You're still going to have your multiple hearthstones likely. You're still going to have all that stuff. 
It's going to be like, okay, well, you're going out to do a world quest. This will be a little more, more fun. Because the problem they have with, with world quests is you travel from the world quest to the other world quest. That travel is not gameplay. That travel is just fucking numlock, just auto run. And then that's where they have the whole, we can't balance world quests correctly because we have to make them longer. So your actual uh, ratio of gameplay to not gameplay is big enough. But then you don't like long world quests. How the fuck do we make you happy? Fine, we'll make you have fun when you're traveling. You're like, hey, you've just made all of world content gameplay. Yeah. Well done. Congratulations. Great idea. If you, yeah, it's funny. Even if, if you just had drastically <laughs> shorter world quests, then maybe had some smart clustering so that people yep. could get a quest stacking vibe and then traveling between them feels great. That'd be so cool. Also, yeah. like if they just really don't be conservative with the amount of speed you can get from dragon like riding. Like they already said, you're faster than regular flying, which is going yeah. to be very fast. You're going to be like, that probably means you're looking at four, well, yeah, 410% is like the, the speed of the minute. 310. 310. Okay, let me think of 400. I'm, I don't know what the fuck I'm smoking. Oh, I'm thinking of how fast I go in Tiger Dash. In Prowl. That's what I'm actually thinking. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, that, it degrades really quickly. But yeah, so you're looking at 310. So what do you need? 450, 500%, 600%? Just mm. go fast enough that you're not going to get disconnected like you're fell rushing and then you're sorted. And then that's like, okay, that's faster. And if they can make it feel better, then, you know, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be. I think they're aware of a lot of these problems and I hope they actually can make it feel good. A lot of this is people ha aren't hands on. I yeah, I hope. I hope maybe. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, okay, to uh, to zoom on then from the mm -hmm. actually. By the way, another thing: there's four mounts you get from this, and each one of them has a humongous amount of customizations. Yeah, actually, I don't think we can move on just yet because there's one small thing I've seen people talk about that Ooh. I think we should probably address. Yeah, totally. And this is the biggest fear I have, which is the fact that it's upgradable. Yeah, because that can mean it's not fun. And then it's a chore, and then people's first impression is, this isn't fun, fuck this, I have to upgrade this, shit. So The other version of that is, it's really, really cool, and then the upgrades make it cooler, but that's really hard for them to do, because they have to get, I mean, there's so much to talk about with this, but they could end up in this real thing of, well, we have to design it so the upgrades are meaningful, which means they can't just, I mean, obviously, you know, literally just being 10%, 20% faster, or 50% faster, that's going to be meaningful to your travel. But if they start to consider it meaningful in the way they currently do, which is access to uh, resources like treasures and rares and stuff, the same way that they consider it for Xerath Mortis, where it's, oh yeah, no, you get to this part in the ciphers and then you unlock this quest. If they do that, then there's going to be this arbitrary feeling of, no, you're too shit to enjoy the game. That's the biggest fear. At yeah, the minute. I, I don't want to, I definitely don't want to fall into advocating the game design trope of, uh, you know, you have all your abilities at the start yeah. and then your character gets bonked in the head and, you know, oh, suddenly Kratos has lost all the things he can do. I, I'll go um, for it. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a cliche, but it works. Even, I, it's like, right, Blizzard, you're a Coke, you're a Coke dealer. Straight up, you're a Coke dealer. Now, yeah. are you going to give somebody 5% Coke, 10% flour as their <laughs> sample dose? Yeah. That's not going to get them hooked and you want them to be mm. hooked. It's maybe not the best, uh, you know, what's screw it. It's, 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 it's a, f a fun example. So, yeah. yes, yeah, they it's... need to make it feel good. Other benefits, too, like even, mm -hmm. you know, the Guild Wars 2 uh, on the ground swoop, or the, yeah. the Raptor will go whoosh, like a bit like Lothar's Griffin Absolutely. in the Warcraft movie where the Griffin mm -hmm. pecks the fuck out of people. Can you have a little thing for your dragon riding mount if you're using it on the ground or maybe you hit the space bar? Uh, you know, once you hit some button once and it does a dash forward. Well, that's going to be in the air. So, yeah. So are, are there like even little things you could do? But that said, if they, if they did that and then, uh, you know, then, then maybe people be like, oh, okay. So you mean I can't even use my ground mount now because the dragon riding one yeah. is more efficient. So maybe don't do that. Anyway, hmm, yeah. ideas. Yeah. They probably want to like take, take a leaf from like, uh, I guess, I guess the FF14 style of, yeah, once you do a, tiny amount of side quests and also finish the zone story-wise then you can go like unlock the full thing it's like if they try to gamify this too much then they this is ironic because if they gamify it too much in the way they gamify things or how gamification is done they will remove the part of it that makes it feel like a game and thus ruin it and that's like the worst thing so i'm obviously definitely going to like you know pay pay super attention to this on alpha and beta and stuff and try to like make sure you know the correct feedback is given and you know people are talking about this stuff but like that's like the one major fear. 
Yeah. They, I'm sure they're fully aware that they need to make it fun in the box feature, but as long as they don't fall into their old habits, which is the big fear. But yeah. Yeah. So overall, it's the community reaction's been interesting. For the most part, I'm very excited for the feature, and I think it could be good. 